Hey guys, we're here in my kitchen today to talk about something that I like to do kind of during the off season uh, and also while I'm just kind of out kayaking and not fishing so much. And that is uh, searching the banks for um, either lost or discarded lures um, like deep diving crankbaits and jigs, things like that that might get caught up in a rock or you broke it off on a fish and then float to the surface and then come up and uh, catch along the shore. So let me grab some of these out of, um, <clears throat> out of storage and let's, uh, let's show you what I'm talking about. All right, so what I've got here are some lures that I picked up at the lake. I've just got a couple of them here. Uh, they're in desperate need of cleaning and new hooks. So we'll bring these in and let you look at them here. I'm going to step around to the back of the camera, though. So let's see here. I've got this uh, deep diving crank. It's a Bomber brand. Let's see, it says uh, Bomber 6A there on the side. It's got kind of a, a fire tiger color to it. And this one's not as bad. It's got some dirt on it that needs to be cleaned. Um, these hooks probably need to be replaced. They're starting to get uh, a bit rusty. So we've got that one there. Got a larger popper size. So this is my index finger. Probably about three and a half inch, three and a half inches there. This is in a baby bass color. Uh, also needs new hooks and maybe even, you know, one of these tail things. It's pretty dried up. But uh, this one, I don't remember where I got this one. Found the uh, bomber tied to a tree. Got a, another smaller popper. This one's maybe about the size of my thumb. Um, let's see, Creek Chub Plunker. It says there on the side. Don't know if you'll be able to see that there. Doesn't appear to have a brand. But that's all right. Then lastly, I have a Jitterbug from uh, Arabest. Or well, this one says yeah, Bogast. Manufactured by uh, Fred Bogast, Akron, Ohio, right in there in the bill. And it's got a um, silver belly and a black, and this one is dirty, dirty, dirty. This will take the most work. All right, I think we'll need to keep in mind while we're doing this is uh, some lures, like uh, these two over here, have split rings in the bottom, which are generally stainless steel or something similar, which makes them easy to replace. You just pop off the hook, pop on a new one, same kind of here, but uh, these other two, a lot of other um, hard lures will have a eyelet that screws directly into the body of the bait, meaning that you'll have to take that eyelet out to replace this hook, and maybe even replace the eyelet. So something I might end up doing is getting some um, metal nips, nipping off these hooks and, add, and adding on split rings to make this a bit easier. And see on this, uh, the back of this jitterbug, it's even got a collared piece to make sure that this can't rough around so much. So this might take a little bit more work than I anticipated, but we'll get it done. And what we'll start off by doing is uh, taking off the hooks and running some uh, warm water and just giving them a, a scrub down with a sponge and some soapy water and get them nice and rinsed, making sure that we don't get too much water up into the body if there turns out to be wood in there. I don't think any of these have wood inside. It seems all either be hollow or have clackers, so they're probably plastic. Should be all right. But we'll get the hooks removed and we'll get them washed and we'll see if any of the paint needs repair or if we want to add a, um, a clear coat finish. All right, so I got the hooks off. Um, I've left the split rings on the ones that have split rings. See that there? So there are the hooks that went off of that one. Here's the jitterbug and the jitterbug hooks, the smaller popper. And the hooks are still attached to the eyelets on there. I uh, don't have my pliers with me, so I can't bend those eyelets out to take those hooks out just yet. But uh, I'll have that done in the next step. So there's that with that. And then uh, the hooks for the deep diver as well. So I'm going to get these washed up, just some warm water. Then we'll uh, have a closer look at how they look when they're clean. All right, so I'm back with some hooks. These are the ones that I got. These are uh, Eagle Claw uh, size 6 hooks. They're um, replacements. These are the type that I get when I um, you know, get regular troubles for fishing with catfish. Um, they're not like Gamagatsu or Mustad or anything like that. This package of five cost me $1.50, which makes them economical. Plus, um, I want to say that they're a type that are intended that if they get gut hooked in a fish or if they get caught somewhere, that they'll rust out over time. Either the, the solder that holds the individual hooks together or um, the points or the barbs or anything like that. So I'm going to pop these out of the package and get them reattached. And I'll give you a, a look at you know how they'll 
come together. All right, so we've got our hook. Start with this pop bar here. I'm going to take and uh, find the split ring here on the back, and I'm going to pinch it open with my fingernail. I have some pretty decent nails. Uh, they're not paper or anything, so I'll be able to hold that open. I'm just going to take this eyelet and try to weasel it in there nice and gentle like. So don't drop anything. Flip it up. Catch it in that, in that hole there. Make sure that you guys can see it. Oh, I think I missed. Nope, messed up. Try again. Maybe try to get it further back. Cool. That one seemed like it better. I'm going to get that twisted around. Oh, ouch. They are sharp, so it's not like these eagle claw hooks are cheap and dinky or um, unacceptable. They're just a uh, lower quality brand, that's all. Or a lower priced brand. I won't call them lower quality. I like them. I'll use them forever. Alright, got that one on. Now, what I did at the store when I chose these sizes is I was actually able to find the um, new versions of these. So this is that Bass Pop R. I've got it up here so that the hooks don't, don't interconnect. You can see that the hooks have some space in between them, just like you want them to, so that it doesn't get caught up or tangled up on the line, or why it's being cast, or why it's being brought in from the shore. But I actually, you know, grabbed these lures off the shelf and, and held them up next to the um, replacement hook packages that I was able to buy there at Walmart and just kind of compared the size of the hook so I know what's kind of the best idea to put on them and what's going to be you know a bit too big or a bit too small. Now we'll admit this bomber had uh, a larger hook on its front than on its back <coughs> which seems kind of counterintuitive to me and think that uh, bass is going to be more likely to pick this up from the tail end than from the nose end but you know I didn't make it alright so I um, I had to go off camera there for a minute the uh, split rings on this bomber are a bit smaller than they were on that popper so I had to kind of get my pliers out and use that but so here we have it for uh, about a dollar fifty and you notice I only did these two lures to start off with two more I had a another smaller popper and a a jitterbug that I also started this video with and you'll notice they're gone. It turns out that the screw-in eyelets on those were completely rusted out and uh, they weren't going to be able to be salvaged. That's just sometimes part of how this goes. Um, I'm not going to hold it against those lures or those lure companies. But these other two worked out pretty fine and I've got a handful of others you know, waiting in the wings to be worked on as well. So it's, it's an ongoing process for me. So for a dollar fifty, a little bit of you know, elbow grease, I was able to, well, these hooks might not be that great. Kind of close. No, looks like they'll be all right. Doesn't look like they'll hook each other. So for $1.50, I was able to revitalize two, you know, essentially $5 a piece lures that I can now put in my tackle box and catch fish on next year or, you know, later this winter if, you know, I get on some deep diving baits. If I find somewhere warm, then I can still get a topwater bite. So... That's that. That's kind of the casual kayak fishing motto. Save a buck where you can and have fun doing so. And uh, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. I'm at Captain Longbong. My brother's at Hotbox Fishing. His Instagram's really taken off and be, uh, be ready to look out for some giveaways coming up on his page pretty soon. And uh, until the next video, you guys have a nice time and do uh, make sure you keep fishing.